Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a crystal ball in which you can see the future? The best way to predict your own future is to build the future you want. My aim is to give people the information and skills they need to design a positive future. The future is not what science and technology do to us. It's what we do with the opportunities that science and technology provide. We're building the future together. Let's imagine you're in the market for a new car. So you've been to all the showrooms, you've looked at all the models, and you've almost made up your mind. You say, I think this is the one for me, but I just want to check the boot one more time. You open the boot and find a little silver box in there. You say, what on earth is that? Open the box and you see lumps of plasticine. You say to the salesman, what are they for? He says, they're not lumps of plasticine. Oh no, they are special blobs. Let's say the gear knob breaks off. What do you do? You take a special blob and put it in place. Wait and watch. Within a couple of days, that blob has turned into a brand new gear knob. If this sounds like a fairy tale, it is. But it's also a metaphor for what happens in the human body with stem cells. What are stem cells? I'm glad you asked. Stem cells are special little cells that can develop into lots of other kinds of cells. Nerve cells, muscle cells, blood cells. Technology is advancing at an amazing rate. But where's it all heading? Well, let me make a prediction. In five years' time, we'll all be wearing something that looks like a wristwatch, but it's much more. In fact, it will contain all of the functions of all of these devices. A high-resolution picture, which can be projected on a wall. A voice recognition system that really works. Satellite navigation and a few things we haven't even thought of. What about 10 years' time? Well, there's a guy in England, Professor Kevin Warwick, who's been playing around with wrist devices for a number of years. He calls it his cyborg arm. The latest version is about the size of a large vitamin pill, and he's had it surgically inserted under the skin of his wrist. His wife has one also, and they can talk to each other by chatting into their wrists. Planet Earth is in big trouble. We're using up fossil fuels too rapidly, we're polluting the atmosphere, and we're wasting water. Now, we can all help to save planet Earth right here in the bathroom. Many dentists will tell you to brush your teeth thoroughly for two minutes, great. But many people leave the tap running while they're brushing their teeth. Now that wastes water, how much does it waste? Two minutes, let's find out. Two minutes is up and I've wasted one and a half buckets of water, that's 20 litres. Now if I brush my teeth three times a day, I'm wasting 60 litres of water. That's serious. There's nothing worse than getting lost in a city you don't really know. But it need never happen if you have one of these, a GPS receiver. GPS stands for Global Positioning System and it refers to a group of 24 NAVSTAR satellites that are circling the Earth at an altitude of around 20,000 kilometres. The radio signals are represented by blobs of plasticine. I'm holding the blue one with my left hand, the green one with my right hand, and the red one with my third hand. They're all going to leave the satellites at the same time. Ready, set, go. They arrived in the order blue, red, and green. The very clever computer in the GPS receiver measures the time delays in those signals arriving, and from that, it's able to calculate the distances of those satellites. Now, if you have three known points, and you know the distances from those points, you know where you are, it's called triangulation. So now you know your location on the face of the Earth, you've entered your destination, and the GPS receiver works out the best route to get there. Some inventions in science are hard to believe. They seem almost like magic. I have a piece of shape memory alloy here. You notice it's been made in the shape of a clover leaf. Now if I destroy that shape by straightening out the piece of wire between my fingers and then winding it around my little finger, it now looks to me like a crooked little spring. But let's see what happens when I blow a blast of hot air from the hairdryer onto that piece of shape memory alloy. Here we go. Amazing. What are some of the current and future applications of shape memory alloys? Well, I'm glad you asked. They've been used in robots and space technology. They've been used to split rocks without explosives. Medical applications include the production of artificial blood vessels and artificial muscles. Also, they've been used to make shirts in which the sleeves roll up automatically in hot weather. In Japan, they've used them to make a bra which takes on the perfect shape of a breast at body temperature. But what I'm waiting for is a car made of shape memory alloy so that you can fix all your dents with a hairdryer. Someday, this may really happen. I'm Dean Hutton, and I can hardly wait. 
Each presentation I design on science, technology and the future is tailored to the needs of the audience. Recent topics have been 2020 vision, building the future you want, corporate curiosity, which looks at curiosity and creativity in business, the future of biotechnology, boost your brain power, improving thinking skills, and save the earth about environmental responsibility. I look forward to working with you.